Hi everybody! So, I am so excited about today. I've been waiting now to show you my little rope baskets. Uh, I completely got sucked into these. Everything is covered in dog hair in my life now. Uh, so this is what we're gonna do today. These really cute little rope baskets and you can make them any size. You can make I mean, I've just completely gone down the rabbit hole with this one. I want to make everything. I want to make a rug. I want to make stuff for stools. I mean, I just, uh, there, there's endless possibilities. Uh, today in the tutorial, what I'm going to show you is how to make a little one like this. The thing is that you need an insert or some, some kind of a motif for when you stiffen it. Uh, so we're going to make a size like this that fits a small soda can, which I'm thinking is universal and everybody can get their hands on. So we're going to make uh, a small one like this and then i show you a little bit how you make it go bigger. And I'm also uh, releasing a small pattern like um, instructions today on how to make these little row baskets with, um, uh, how do you say, step-by-step -step picks and everything. If you want to have it written down as well, that is always nice and show you there how to make it bigger. But you can go as big as you want. I want to show you this one and you can make them in all kinds of colors. These are my old ones. I love these and it's perfect to use your scraps. So what we need is uh, I get into detail with this obviously in the tutorial, but we'll, you need some kind of a um, Rope to crochet around. I'm using this here from Bobbini. You can use any kind you want. doesn't matter what type it is. There are many uh, Yarn brands that have some something like this. If you look for uh, braided cord yarn, then you should find something online so you can get these in all kinds of colors and I had these here as well. These were from uh, Katya, but I don't have the, the label on them anymore. I remember it was Katya, but I don't remember what it's called. These are a bit finer. And I made these here too with the, with the little ones. I really like these. They're a bit more like, um, what do you say, um, fine, you know? So these are really cute. And you can use these for everything, like in your bathroom, for pencils, for your hooks, like I do and what have you. And then I really want to show you, I made one as a friend, as a gift for a friend around a flower pot. Ah, isn't it cool? Oh my God, I love this. And the thing is, so when I did this one, I just, uh, you know, I, I explained the, the repetition, the increase and everything, both in the, in the written instruction and I go over it in the tutorial as well. But the thing is that it doesn't have to be very perfect because we always have the insert. So this one wasn't very perfect until I put it on here and then you just tuck at it and uh, stiffen it a bit. And voila! Isn't it cute? Oh my god. I really, I don't have any plants, so now I really just want plants just to do these. Really, really cool. So did I say that how cool I think this is? <laughs> so you can go big or small. I want to show you my, my basket as well that I made for my, I use this for my cotton stash. And the great thing about these is that you can obviously decide on your, si on your size. So I think this was perfect. I made this specially so that I could like stuck, um, stuff in all my my um my balls from the cotton and i made it the exact height to fit that so i really like this and this is actually made with a bit thicker yarn the the rope it's called jumbo so you can i mean there are so many possibilities the you need the jumbo yarn and then obviously some cotton scraps and you know you can you can use the mini skeins or you can just use some scraps what have you and last but not least i'm just going to show you what i'm working on at the moment i didn't manage to finish it before the video but i will and that is this here. Isn't it cool? Oh my God, I love this. <laughs> and I'm actually going to do this. I have this great big horrific um, sort of floor pillow thing that I found 15 years ago. And I was going to cover it in some nice crochet and this is going to be it. So I absolutely love this. And I've done all the increases and then now I'm going to just have to go straight down. But I'm really looking forward to show you this one. I'm super excited about this one. So, uh, I think that is it. So we're going to do the rope baskets today. And I'm going to show you everything, how to stiffen it, just from start to finish. And I hope you have as much fun with this as I've been having. Because I've been like, like I said, I've, been, I've gone completely down the rabbit hole and just can't stop making these. Such fun, such fun. And, you know, another easy peasy, nice little project for summer, which is our theme now. Uh, let's get to it. Let's make those rope baskets, you guys. Okay, so before we get started, I wanted to go through what we need to make our little rope basket. Uh, we need, first of all, uh, some sort of uh, yarn 
as base. So I'm using this here from Bobbini. Uh, this is the five millimeter. You can also get the jum jumbo nine millimeter. I have used that as well. I did my big blank and uh, my big um, basket with that, with um, which I use for my cotton stash. Uh, but for the basket, the smaller ones and whatever, I kind of like this one better because it's, it's well, anyways, you can use any one of them. But for the smaller basket, I would definitely recommend this. Uh, there are other brands. This is I am in no way brand associated with anybody. Do not like that. So this is just something that I got. It's easily available here in Iceland. So this is what I use because, um, and I like it. I can recommend it, but it, you can use whatever you want, guys. You know, there, I'm sure there are many brands. If you search for braided corn yarn, then you can uh, find, I'm sure, something close to you or online. Uh, this is what you need for the base, yeah? It doesn't take very much for for uh, one uh, from the little ones. It's just like maybe, I don't know, it says in the pattern like two and a half meters or something. Uh, but it, I mean, from this chunk here, I can make at least four or five easily, you know, like these. So, uh, a bit of that, but these come, come in actually in huge skeins. Uh, then you need the cotton. Uh, for color and for really what you're working with the bra the this the cord is just like sort of the base that you're working around yeah so as always i'm using mainly uh katona because it's just again no affiliation just one of my favorite yarns to work with really good does splits and they have a huge range of colors so but any cotton will do really and just um Scraps. Scraps are beautiful for this project uh, because you need so little for each round. So if you're making a multicolored one, you need like seriously just tiny bits for each row round. And it's uh, it's perfect for scraps. And also I'm making my big cushion now and I'm using the mini skeins from these and they are doing quite well. I haven't gotten to the point where one mini skein isn't doing one round and I'm at round like 20 or something. So it's really big uh, in increase. So you need the cord yarn, you need some scraps of cotton, like just any, any, any type. And your hook size is, it goes by whoppa, the, the cotton that you're using, not by the braid. Okay. So I'm using this cotton here. So I'm going to be using a, a three millimeter hook. Yeah. Uh, if you're using a finer uh, cotton yarn, then you need a smaller hook. A, th a thicker cotton yarn, you're going to need a bigger hook. You can use whatever type of yarn you want, but I would recommend this is fingering weight, sort of like sports fingering weight, yeah? So, hook to go with your cotton yarn. Check. Whoppa. And then you need, obviously, as always, your small scissors, just for trimming all the ends, and a darning needle. And now, too, we want to use a... We want to have a... Uh what do you call it, stitch marker that you can open because it's really good while you're doing the the um, increase. It's nice to put a stitch marker so you know where you're at, yeah? So stitch marker, darning needle, small, small scissors and a hook. It's all just the basic stuff, but I do really recommend having one big good scissors as well because it's good for when you're trimming the cord. Uh, I love these scissors. I just got these, aren't they gorgeous? Um, uh, the, yeah, it's really good to have big scissors as well. Now, this is the basic stuff that you need to make your basket. Then, when you go into um, what you call um, stiffen it, then you are going to need some sort of insert for it to to put inside it while you're stiffening it. So the small one that I'm going to show you just fits exactly for a small uh, can of soda. We have this all over the world, so I hope you won't have a problem getting one of those. And so you need something to put inside your basket while you're stiffening it. And then for the stiffening bit, I'm using Mod Podge in some kind of small container for, you know, uh, putting pouring it in. And I really like using these here. These are sort of, sort of like a sponge um, brush, but you can use a regular brush as well. Just take care, it's a bit big to have it a uh, rather like big brush because uh, you're really going to be like applying a lot to it because you want to get a lot of stiffy on there. And you need quite a lot of stiffy. Like I did five baskets initially, like five rather small, like around this size and some a bit bigger, some a bit smaller. And I used my whole of the stiffy and I need still to uh, apply a second round. So for, you know, I would buy two of these at least. You can use some other types as well. I think you can use this as well. Anything that is sort of like um, 
you know, water-based sealer, glue, wood glue. I have this adhesive lacquer as well. Some, you know, just whatever. There are many things, but what I will definitely recommend just because I have tried it and I always use it is this here, the lovely Stiffy, who doesn't like a good Stiffy. <laughs> Anyways, that's it. I think I'm going to stop talking. Well, one more thing. I, I'm using this as well for the small ones. Uh, I have no idea what it's called, but I remember it was from Katya. The, the ticket is long gone. Uh, I use this for these here. I have one in green and one in, in this color. So that is nice as well. And uh, then you have different colors. But you really, in the end, um, they were so they were a bit finer. So and I had the same weight of yarn on the cotton, so you can't really see the base very much. But it's still nice. So these are a bit like more delicate than I don't know if you can really see the difference, but they are a bit more delicate. Oh, these look good together. Mm, oh, all kinds of blue hues. So that's it. I uh, really wanted to get this done. Ah, and I wanted to show you these as well. Before we start, I'm going to show you how to make the, the little coasters too. So off we go. Ah, yeah, and for the insert, you can use all kinds of bottles as well. I used a, a wine bottle and some old milk bottle. So, you know, just whatever you have at hand. But the, the, the basic prototype pattern fits for a small soda can because we can all have one of those. And it's a good actually fit for, for those of you that need to keep your soda warm, cold outside. This is not a problem in Iceland, so. <laughs> okay, whoop, whoop, let's go. Let's make them baskets. Okay, so we start with the small prototype and we start by doing, I have here my, oops, let's keep this in the frame. I have my two types of yarn that we need, like I told you, it's the braided cord and the, and the uh, cotton. And so we start by making a magic loop with the cotton and we do this like this. I'm just going to show you exactly how I do it. So I will put it around two fingers, hold here, and then I put the yarn up here like I want to have it and grab around the, the join of the two here with my thumb and my index finger for my left hand. And again, always this, the short tail is supposed to go here to the left and the long tail to the right, okay? Do, 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 do. And we're going to start by doing one chain here into the magic loop, just to fasten it like so. Okay. And now we introduce the cord. And always with the magic loop, just take care that your you have to work around always both the tail and the magic loop when you're working. And now we just lay the, the cord here sort of behind the magic loop like this okay and we're just going to leave a bit of a tail here we'll cut this off later it's just nice to have a bit of a tail here okay so we lay the cord behind the magic loop and we're going to work around the cord and into the loop okay and always on over our tail as well because if we don't work around the tail of the magic loop then the magic loop doesn't work okay so we have three threads here, two of the cotton and one of the cords that we're going to work around. And the first round is just 10 single crochets into the magic loop and around the cord. OK, so we go here into the magic loop and around the cord, get our yarn up like so, and then get it, get our uh, yarn from the back and do one single crochet. OK, again, into the magic loop around the cord, get the yarn here from the back, pull it up, and again from the other side we get the yarn to finish. Okay, so now we have two. Into the magic loop, pull your yarn up like this, and then get the yarn from the back. Okay, this should be super clear by now. <laughs> That's three, and we're going to do ten single crochets in the first round like this around the magic loop, inside the magic loop and around the cord at the same time. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. You see? Seven, eight, ah, sorry, that one wasn't quite, you want these to be a bit tight because we then really pull this together this first round. Okay, so I have two, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, so it should look like this now. Okay, this is not quite even. I did the the first few a bit, uh, not as tight as the other ones, but it's okay. This is handmade and we don't want to hide that. <laughs> Anyways, this will be like at the bottom. So, uh, okay. So now what you do is just take your hook out, just make your loop big like this and take your hook, hook out. And now we're going to pull the magic loop together to make a circle from this first round. And so we want to take the tail here and put it down here and pull it like so just pull at it Whoopa. and then once it looks like this then you're going to put your tail of the cord below the long end okay and you want the tail of the magic loop to be here below as well and just keep pulling at it until it's really tight Okay, this is a bit fiddly here at the at the beginning, but it's all good. It will all look good and be happy. Okay, so this here, and just pull it tightly together. Okay, so this is now the first round all done. On to the second round. And while we're doing the bottom part, you see this part here, we have to be doing an increase. Okay, so now what we do is we're going to work two stitches, two single crochets into each and every stitch. And in the whole of the, ba like the basket crochet, like the basket rope technique, the rope basket technique, blah, 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 is uh, you're always working around the cord at the same time. So you're working into the single crochets from last row round and around the cord. So we're kind of laying our cord on top of the of the stitches from last round and working into the stitches and around the cords. Okay, so now we're going to work two stitches in each stitch from round one. So now we just insert our hook here into the first stitch of round one and put the cord here on top. I'm doing this super slow, I hope it's clear enough. Uh, and then we're going to pull the yarn here through from the back and up. And now, because we're at the first join here of the, 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 um, the, from round one to two, we want to do it a bit tight here so that we were hiding this bit of cord here. So we're going to do two stitches here into, sorry, I'm just going to tighten this one a bit up on the hook because we don't want gaps at this point. Okay. So into the first one tight, make sure that this one here up on your hook is tight and into the first one. Lay the cord on top and work one stitch around the cord. And now you see there's a little like sort of gap here and we're just going to push it with our fingers like so. Yeah. And we did one and we're going to do two in each stitch. So second one in the same stitch here. Okay, now we've done two into this and again we have this little gap and I'm just going to again pull at the cord and sort of push my stitches back, right? And so, because we're working in a spiral, then I like to put a stitch mark in my first stitch. So we just did two stitches in this first round. So I know that this, this one here was my first stitch of round two. I just use these here and I'll just leave it open. Okay, so I put a stitch mark in the first stitch of the round two. So we know once when we finish because we're always working in a spiral. And this round two is just two stitches into every stitch and always around the rope at the same time. So into the next stitch. One. And two. And next one. And always into the, the stitch from last round and around the cord. One. And two. One and two. And it's normal that you will see some, some of the rope in between. And that's actually like the, the bit that is nice about this technique, that you see the rope through it. 
if you don't want to see the rope at all, then you need a thinner cord to work with. And just like this, two into each and every stitch, always around the cord at the same time. I really love this, the beginning of these. It looks like a little uh, caracol, how do you say them? Like a snail. <laughs> okay. Just continue two into each stitch until you get to your stitch marker. Whoop. Like so. And two. Okay, there are two here more stitches before we finish our round. One and two. And the last stitch, two into that one as well. One and two. And so we started with 10 stitches in round one. And so now we should have 20, right? Yeah. Okay, so that's round two, all done. On to round three. So now I take my stitch marker out. And in round three, we are going to do two into two stitches into the two single crochet in, into the next stitch, and then one into the next one. And that's the repeat. Two, one, two, one, always. Okay. So first one we do two here, one and two. And then I'm going to put my stitch marker in again into the first stitch that I made. So I know when the round is finished. And then one into the next one. So this is the repeat for round three. Two single crochets into the next stitch. One and two. And then one into the next one. Always alternating two and one. One, two, and one. One, two, and one. Whoop. Yeah, see how it's coming along. Our caracol is getting bigger. <laughs> one, two, one. One, two, And one. Always the same. One, two, one. This really is so pretty. I love this. And it's quick as well because you're working around the cord. So instead of be doing single crochets, you're always like each row, each round is quite thick, you know? So it really works up rather quickly. So what did I do here? One, two, one into the next one and then two and one and now we only have two stitches left here you see and now i'm going to do two into the next one Whoopa. and one into the last stitch of the round so that is round three all done. On to the fourth round here. And this is the last round we'll do with a repeat, with an increase for the small prototype. And so now there's always the same. I'm going to show you later how you go a bit bigger, but it's super easy. The The formula for the, for the increase is always just the same. So in the first round, we just did two single crochets into each stitch. Then in the next one, we did two single crochets and one in between, two, one, two, one. And now we're going to do two into the next one and then two uh, into one of the each, of the each of, uh, well, two single crochets into each of the next two, okay? And then we always just, if when you go bigger, then you just have more um, single ones in between the decrease, right? Okay, I don't know if I'm explaining myself here, I'm just gonna show you. So now we start by doing two single crochets into the next one, one and two. And I put my stitch marker here so, to, so that I know where the round begins into the first stitch. And then we now do one into the next one 
and one into the next one. So now it's two, one, one. Two single, single crochets in between the increases, right? Okay, two single crochets into the next stitch and then one single crochet into each of the next two stitches, right? One and two. And one and one. Right? Two into the next one. One into each of the next two. So it always just gets more. You always just have in each round you have one more single single crochet in between the increases, yeah? One, two, and then one and one. Okay, two into this one, one into each of the next two. And this is, you know, not an exact you know, if you make a bit of a mistake at some point, it's not the end of the world, really. It's, uh, you know, this is rather relaxed. I mean, be close to it. <laughs> Don't just go willy-nilly. But, uh, you know, it's not, uh, this is not an exact, like, if you do at 1.3 in between the increase, nothing really happens. Unless you accept that it won't actually, I, I, I have now, it won't uh, fit at the end of the row, but again, you know. But this depends on your level of OCD, so I will leave that up to you. This is the formula. The right one is two into the next stitch, and then one single crochet into each of the next two. Okay, two here. And then one into each of the next two. I should have now three left. Yes, I did it correctly. So now I have two into the next one. And then one and one. And now I have finished round four. Okay, so now we're done with the increasing bit for the small prototype ones like this one here. Yeah, so you see that actually, oh, I've used the same color, I didn't notice. You see here, we have one, two, three, four, and then this is five here in this one. So the thing is that it, it sort of continues to go out a bit. Um, I mean, you see the, the bottom here is a bit larger than what we have, okay? So when you're like in this one, it fits just for the soda can, right? So I've done the calculations for you. But if you're using some kind of other, other motif, you want to make it bigger or smaller, whatever, just keep in mind that uh, the diam diameter, I think you call this, the, the width of your circle will, like when you stop the increase, you know, do, do think that they will go like one more out until it starts to just go flat up, right? So for example here, if I use the bottom of my my soda can here, it's it's like this and you can see it's not quite as big as, well it's almost as big, but it's not quite as big because it kind of goes up here in the middle. Uh, it's not quite as big as, as the soda can, but you want to stop the increase when you're almost at the same size as the the diam diameter well, diameter of your the bot the, at the bottom of what you're using, right? But you don't have to think about this now because I've done the calculations for you, and so you just do four rounds of increase, and then you um, start just going straight up, right? So rounds five to nineteen are all the same. Now we're just going to work one stitch into each stitch, and we're not going to do any increase at all. And now I just took out my stitch marker because I know that at this part here I'm sort of at the end of the round and this is again not, it doesn't have to be exact. So now it's just really easy, just you just, now you don't have to think at all, you just continue doing one stitch into each and every stitch. And the only thing that you have to think about is trying to keep the same sort of tension and just happily hook along one into each stitch and always working around 
the court at the same time. So after this round five, it sort of starts going more up, right? And so since these rounds are all the same, I'm going to show you a little trick that I like to do when I'm doing it just in one color. Then, or just in general, I, I do this. Like once I've finished the, the increase bit, then I like to take care of my ant here in the middle because then I don't have to, because if not, I'll have to like turn it around and do it like that. So it's just nice to just finish this and then you have it already. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to do, how to finish off here the, the, the beginning bit. Okay, so what we're gonna do there is just take our, the ant here that we have from the magic loop and you just will pull at it like really tight. Okay, as tight as you can so that it completely completely closes here on the other side, right? And you always also want to pull a bit at, at the cord, okay? And then we're just gonna cut it really close, basically as close as we can, because the thing is, you don't have to worry about anything unraveling here because we're gonna stiffen it, right? So this is like, stiffening is like glue, so nothing is gonna unravel once you, you apply this, right? So we can really just go straight in here and just cut it almost as close as we can. It's nice to have big, nice scissors for this, not the small ones. Okay, like so. And then you see, it's just, I, I cut it as close as I could. And then we take the darning needle and I will use this, this ant here because we have to darn it in anyway. So I will use this ant here from the magic loop just to maybe try and go over it a bit. You see, like so just to hide this tail here, but this will be on the inside of your, your little basket, so nobody will really see it, but good proper finish is always the best way to go, right? Okay, so you see now I've hit it a bit here, and then when you want to weave in your end, again, you don't really have to weave them in very, very uh, extravagantly, because this will all be uh, stiffened, but when you're weaving in your end, the best way is just to hide it inside of the cord, right? So just one moment here more, like so. And cut your tail. And now we have done the finishing bit here inside. This is what will be here inside of the little baskets, right? So. Now we have finished that, and so it's just good to get that out of the way. And now, really, you just hook along. Uh, this one, if I do 19 rounds, that's sort of as high as I can go with the soda can <laughs> before it goes in, inwards again. So that's, I do 19 rounds. You can do any amount, really, that you like. If you have something longer that you can use as a motif, as an insert to stiffen it around, then, um, you know, go for it. You can make it taller, you can make it shorter. And again, you can make these any size you want. Whoops, I didn't go into both loops there. You can make it any size you want, as long as you have some sort of motif to stiffen it around, to use as an insert while stiffening it. And while you're getting the hang of this, I've obviously, obviously made loads of these. So the only thing that will sometimes a bit throw you off maybe is if you don't have the right tension. So every now and again, like in a few rounds, just try and insert your little soda bottle, uh, soda can into what you already have and just to see if it's if it fit. And you want it to be a tight fit because then it's just, it, well, it's just nicer. Uh, so you want it to be like, here I have one that I've already made. It's without stiffening, you see? And so you want it to be like quite, you have to sort of like, how do you say this? Smoke it out, like, like really want it to be very tight here up on it. And with 19 rounds, then I'm getting up here to the border where it starts to go back in, right? So if you want, and if you feel that it's a bit off the tension, then you can fit it on your way up. And if it's a bit, like if it feels like it's getting a bit loose, then you can always just pull at the cord 
put it up on there and pull at the cord and sort of tighten it around this. And then you can just skip a few stitches. I guess not, nothing's gonna happen if you just skip one or two stitches just to make it a bit tighter if it's not, if it's a loose fit. You don't want a loose fit. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. So I'm just gonna go continue going here. But as you can see, this is like pretty much all I'm gonna show you. Well, then I'm gonna show you how to finish it off nicely and the stiffening bit. Just feels like this is too easy. <laughs> No, but we like easy. And I'm, as you've seen, uh, I really just want, because it's summertime and you sort of, I don't know, at least me, I, I can't have my head, wrap my head around like a big old project or something. I just want to do like quick makes that are easy and I can do on the go and are like nice gifts. And so that is my my theme here now for this little summer series of tutorials. It's just quick little makes that are fun and easy and you don't have to think too much, right? You can even be drinking, like really? <laughs> Am I allowed to say that? Uh, not drinking, not yet, might later. <laughs> okay, as you can see now, it's starting to go up, right? And now you want to pop it out then because we want this side this is the, the side that we're crocheting for, from, is the outside of our basket because the inside is not quite as pretty, yeah? Because the outside of the single crochets are prettier than the inside. So now you just kind of pop it out like this and then you keep going just straight up. And when you count your rounds, I mean, it's not a, you just go one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm on round six now. And the tension bit is really just, you sort of feel it. It's not, or well, I feel it at least, but if again, once you have gone a bit more up, then you can try and fit it and see if it's, if it's a good fit and it's too, not too loose or not too tight or what have you. Okay, so I'm gonna continue just a bit and then I'm gonna fit mine with you, okay? Just one stitch into each stitch and keep going. Hmm? Now it sort of looks like a uh, Princess Leia uh, hairdo. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> okay, so I've done like a couple of more rounds. I have like eight rounds now. And as you can see, it looks like a little ball. You could also do a ball from it. You can use any form that you like. Ooh, I could use this as well. Okay, now on track. So I'm gonna fit my can and it's a bit loose. Now I obviously did this on purpose because I'm such a kind, nice teacher that I want to show you the tricks. <laughs> it's just a tad loose. I would want it to be a bit tighter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to hold it tight like this, pull your, your um, cotton loop open, and I'm gonna pull at the cord, okay? So just pull at it and sort of make it go a bit tighter. Okay, it's not working like this, I'm gonna do it like this. You can see. So I'm gonna pull a bit at the cord. So I'm just pulling it tighter like this. And what happens when I do this? It, it all goes tight on this end and not on this end. So I'm going to hold on to where I pulled my my yarn, my uh, cord here, and then I'm just gonna even it out a bit like this. Okay. Et voila. <laughs> And I mean, these aren't supposed to be all like the exact same, uh, you know, it's a, it's a living, breathing thing. So let's try it again. Mm, yes, I like this better. So now I'm going to try and keep this same. And I mean, it's a bit then wider here than here, but that's quite all right. Because once we um, stiffen it on the can, it will take the, the perfect form of the can. It will just all be grand. Just grand, I tell you. So. Do try it on after a bit and see if it's loose or tight and then do as I did if it's not quite perfect. And then just when you continue, then you want to try and continue with this same gauge. And again, if it happens again, then you just do it again. Just every few rows you want to, you want to fit it on your can or on your whatever motif insert you have and see if it's nice and snug because it'll it'll give a better result at the end to have it really nice and snug around whatever we're using as insert, right? And now I just continue going, gonna put some music on and just one stitch into each stitch 
and this is as you can see totally uh, you know tv beach holiday on a flight friendly project because you don't have to think at all after the little bit of increase in the middle in the beginning and you know that really wasn't too much of thinking so just generally i don't want to use my brain at all <laughs> No, but during the summer I don't. I really don't. The house is filled with children. I am so unbelievably happy. I mean, I love my boys, obviously love them very dearly, but they can be completely unsufferable. So, and so loud. Oh my God, they're so loud. They're so loud. I'm never loud. Such a, you know, uh, ladylike, uh, silent type. <laughs> No, but they're, seriously, they're so loud. And our new house is, is very old. It's like 120 years old and it's a timber house. So you can just hear everything. Oh my God. So I'm so happy that I have put my studio in order because the studio is in the basement and there is no, like, there's a special entrance, you know? There's no, they cannot get in here and they do not have a key. <laughs> so... Uh, I will just leave the house to them and I will go down here. This is uh, one of the main reasons that I did like kick myself in the butt and um, and get the studio into order so that I could just flee down here and work here. Uh, and I am extremely happy to be able to just, you know, I just fix them breakfast, make my coffee. And I'm like, I'm going downstairs to work and I'm not even working half the time. I'm just being alone. <laughs> <laughs> you moms know what I mean. I mean, just being alone is just beautiful, isn't it? It's just the best thing. <laughs> and I can still hear their ruckuses upstairs a bit because, again, it's a it's an old house, but it doesn't bother me so much. So I'm extremely happy to have my little getaway mm, here in the... Actually, yeah, mm -hmm, I call this... <laughs> I don't know if I should tell you this. We call me, me and my friends, uh, my girlfriends, we call this the champagne cellar <laughs> because uh, it has actually doubled as an maybe after our party sometimes place, <laughs> and or we will start here before going downtown because or going to the bars because I live right downtown, so the bars are just like five minutes away, and so we will start here with a bit of bubbly and then move downtown and sometimes finish as well. So welcome to the champagne cellar, you guys. It's peaceful when it's supposed to be and then it's not peaceful when it's not supposed to be. So it's quite perfect. <laughs> yes, ah oh, yeah, this is a bat better fit, you see? Now it's all snug and nice. Yes, I like this. And this little bulging bit here is just part of my design, if anyone asks. <laughs> but yeah, okay, great. Now I can just keep going, right? Can you see? Isn't it cute? <laughs> I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten done. So I'm going to do nine more and I'm going to show you how to do the finish. Whoop. Okay, so I have finished up my, my, uh, my rounds. So the thing is here, actually, I was just going to show you, you can do this one here. I did 19 rounds on this one. Actually, I only did 18 and it depends on how you want to have it like if if I will pull it straight up then and Not push in the bottom bit then 18 fits perfectly, but if I do it with 19 But I can also if you because the can has like a um, a, a Vacuum here in the bottom So if you if you do it like this and you want the bottom to be like sort of going up then you will have space here for one more round. I'm just going to do 18 on this one because I think it's nice. Uh, you can do it as high, as low as you want. And I just kept fitting it while I went along. You can see it's bulging a bit here at the beginning where uh, I was doing it a bit too loose. I feel that's okay. If you, you know, if you want to have it all very like uh, in order, then you could obviously just unravel those first rounds if it's not fitting too nicely, but I am very happy with this. Uh, so I'm going to show you how we finish it off. And bef like I said before, like I already did the finishing in the middle bit. If you haven't done it already, then do like just before we do the cutting here at the end, then you just turn it inside out like this Whoopa. and finish the beginning bit here. OK, but you want to do that before we cut the yarn because the end is a bit fiddly, like the finishing. It's a, just tad fiddly. So. What we want to do is we want it to be like you can see it here on this one that isn't already 
I haven't already uh, stiffened it. So you just want to have it sort of, because we're working in a spiral, so you just want to sort of have it faded down here. And you can notice it more on this one because I haven't stiffened it yet, uh, as opposed to on this one here, where I have already stiffened it. And so when you stiffen it, you can sort of uh, mold it so that it just looks straight, right? But this bit is a bit fiddly because we have to cut the cord um, lengthwise. Okay, so you want the big good scissors for this. And so when you stop, and you have decided that this is the size that you want, then I usually just cut the, the yarn here first. I believe like, I don't know, this is like one inch or something. Okay. And then what you want to do is you want to make sort of like an, um, okay, I'm gonna show this well on the camera here. You want to, to cut it lengthwise like this to make it thin at the end and sort of, okay, I'm just gonna show you. Okay, so you want this bit here to be thin and then go wide, do you know? So we're cutting it lengthwise, like so. And what is fiddly now is that our cord is massacred. <laughs> And when you're working a lot with it, uh, you, it wants to sort of just um, unravel, you know. So this is what we want to happen. We want it to be laying down like this and go thinner at the end, okay. So once we have done this um, uh, surgical thing here with our cords, we want to finish it right off. And we're just going to work single crochets all the way over the cord. And now the first bit here is just normal. And you want the, the cut bit to be laying down like so, okay? Let's hope this turns out good here. And we're just gonna do our normal single crochets and just lay it on top like this. Okay, and the bit is that it wants to unravel, but it's okay because we're gonna stiffen it, so it won't, but we don't want to unravel it we want, don't want it to unravel while we're working around it. So just a tad fiddly, but I mean, we needed some sort of, oh my God, what is this like a bug? Oh, Jesus, we'll him. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> we almost have no bugs in Iceland. Uh, it was just like a strange fly. Uh, where was I? Tad fiddly, bugs coming at me. Uh, <laughs> We're just going to power through. It's already starting to unravel. I blame the bug. And you see, you want this bit to be facing down and it's not. Ugh, God damn it. Okay, like so. And don't worry, you can then just cut the excess cord away. Okay, whoop up. Very well, pull at it because it will just come apart. Okay, I must admit that this has been more smoother in my life before in other occasions when I've done this, but this is just typical, isn't it? Now I'm doing it on camera and then it's like less than perfect, but you know, in other aspects of my life, I'm obviously completely perfect. Just ask my husband. <laughs> okay, it's really coming unraveling here, so I'm just going to pull at it like this and take out the bits here at the end. And just do one more stitch here around this. Let's fake it till we can make it, okay, like so. Okay, but it doesn't look so bad now. It's just me panicking. So then the last stitch you're gonna do, actually I'm just gonna trim these a bit here. Now we want the small scissors, so I'm gonna trim the end here. Boom. And everything that is sort of sticking out here. Yeah. Okay. Do, 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 do. And obviously need the small scissors for this. So yes, I'm very square when it comes to finishing, I must admit. Okay, and on the other side as well, you see it's a bit one out there, so we're just gonna trim, trim, trim. Mm, 
I do like this though. I feel like a surgeon. <laughs> but it's less responsibility, but still. Uh, okay. Yes, yes. All fiddly bits away. And like I said, it's okay because we just trim it down and then we do the the fabric stiffener and then it will just all stay in place and it will look great. <sighs> okay, so now I've trimmed it all down. And like you saw, I just did a single crochet there around the, the end of it and you want to just make sure that it's tight. And then you're going to do one slip stitch, just going in the next one, pulling it up and straight up like this. Okay. And then we're going to cut our tail, just leave a bit of a tail for darning. And we're going to pull it straight up. Whoop up. And we're going to get our darning needle. And we're going to do the invisible join at the end. Oh, I really love this color. These are going to look great together. Yay! Uh, okay, keep focused. <laughs> so we're going to do a... We're going to skip this stitch here, the next one, you see, we're sort of on that. And we're going to go into the next one and do an invisible stitch over this one here, okay? So insert it under the next stitch, not the stitch that is next, but the second next. Like so, pull it in a bit, and then you can insert your needle back again into the loop where we came out of. Like so. And this is the invisible join, and it just looks like a normal stitch. Okay, so it's obviously going whoop here now, but it's okay because we're going to fix that when the in the stiffening. And then we just hide the tail. And again, we don't have to do this too, um, you know, too much. We just hide it just a bit because everything, it won't unravel. It's un impossible for something that once you have stiffened it like this, that it will unravel. So I'm just going to hide it inside the cord here for a few stitches. Go on. And... I want that stitch to be slightly smaller. Yeah, okay. And then we cut. Do, 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 do. Just tie it up to it. Like so. Et voila, we're done. So next up is just putting it up on your can. And you see it's looking like wobbly, wibbly, wobbly here. And then we put it on up on our motif and everything just looks great and straight. Oh, I love it. Okay, push it down a bit here. And there you go. And so, uh, obviously, I didn't really think of this bit. Um, and you see now, before I stiffen it, I will just sort of even it out like this, and then it will be all straight and nice. Uh, this obviously will work also as a cooling device for people that do not live in Iceland. <laughs> to keep their drinks cool. Um, I guess it would be nicer to have it than unstiffened, I suppose. But definitely, 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 if you're not, if you're gonna use it like that, I would always at least stiffen the, the, the bottom bit, especially on the inside, just to make sure that nothing unravels and this finishing bit. So maybe just the, the top layer or something. But actually I was trying it on the one that I already did years ago. And this is uh, stiffened like two times. So it's quite, quite, um, sturdy but it's still you know you can do it like this and you could use it like this i mean it does fit in but then it's hard to the touch you know mm -hmm. so but if you're gonna use it as a cozy for your drink then do please at least uh, apply stiffener both on the outside and the inside of the bottom bit so that doesn't unravel and definitely here at the end because this if it if if you pull at it it's just it's just don't pull at it <laughs> Don't, just don't, you will just, it will, it's not, it's not going to be good things happening. So next up will be the stiffening and it will go from this to this. Yay. Okay. So I got a bit ahead of myself there when I said we we're going to the stiffening next. I'm going to, I just want to show you a couple of things before we do the stiffening. First, how to go big if you want to make a larger size basket. And then I'm going to also show you how to change colors. Okay, so first we're going to do the go big. Uh, I'm just going to show you, two, you know, a couple of more rounds just so that you, I'm sure that you've got the increase formula already. I'm just making these coasters here with six rounds instead of the four like we did in the in the small baskets. <coughs> Sorry. And so <clears throat> I've already done 
up to round four here, like we did before. So in the first round, it was just 10 single crochets. In the next round, you did two single crochets into each stitch. In the third round, you did two single crochets into one stitch, one single crochet into the next one. In the fourth round, then you did two single crochets and then two, one single crochet into each of the next two. So now we have two single crochets in between the, the increases. And now when we go to the fifth round, now we have three single crochets in between each increase, okay? So we start the round as always with an increase. So there we do one and two into the same stitch. And we're gonna continue putting our stitch marker here in the first stitch of the round to mark it. Well, this is not being, he's not being cooperative here. There we go. Okay, so we start the round as always with the increase, two double crochet, no, two single crochets into the same stitch. Oh dear Lord, come on. Okay, there we go. And then we're gonna do three single crochets, just one into each stitch. So now we have three single crochets in between the, the increase, okay? So we go one, two, and three. And now we do the increase again, and that's two, two single crochets into the same stitch. Okay, and then we have three in between. One, two, three. And we do another increase, that's two in the same. And three in between. One, two, three. Increase, two in the same. One and two, and then three in between. Uh, in the written instruction, I wrote this all out up until like round 10, but it's really, really easy to just, you always have one more stitch in between the increases in each round. Okay, we did three, so there's another increase. One and two. And then we have three. One, two three and again increase that's two here and then one two three no oops sorry i did two in the same there that was not my intention we did the increase one two and the third we always have three Stitches in between increases now, okay, and then we do the increase again. That's two in the same one and then three in between I think these will be really cute coasters actually and I need some because um, especially here when I'm filming you can actually see this uh, I have to um, um, Sand this down and make it pretty but it's a uh, tack wood. So I don't want it to be uh, Further damaged so this will come really in handy these little coasters here Okay, increase three in between, one, two, three, and another increase. And again, this is not like if you sometimes do two in between or four in between, it's not the end of the world. I mean, this is just sort of like a, a guideline, you know. Okay, I did the increase, now I'm going to do three in between, one, two, three. And then I do the increase, that's two in the same one. And finish with one, two, three. Okay. So this was round five then. And let's just do one more so you can see how crazy easy this is. And we start with the increase, that's two in the same. Insert our stitch marker. And now we have four in between, okay? So in round six, we have four in between. Two to uh, increase, two in the same, and now we have four in between. One, two, three, and four, and then we do another increase, two in the same one. And four in between. One, two, three, and four, and increase two in the same. 
Again, four, one, two, three, whoops, it splits. Three and four, and another increase. It's two on the same one. Okay, so you definitely get this. So in each row, in each round, you just have one more stitch in between the two into the same increase bits, right? And when I finish this round, I'm just going to do the same finish as I do at the end of the, the baskets. One, two, three, four, and then two. And these aren't like, I don't even have to go any further, do I? It's just one more in between the increases. So in the next round, there will be five in between the increases, six, seven, etc. Okay, so you just keep going like this. And these here, I've already, well, I haven't blocked them. So I think, I, well, I don't think, I hope and I know that they will be prettier once I block them because they're a bit like, you can see the increase here and this is not like a perfect thing, but I'm going to block them all nice and even. And this one turned a bit bigger because I had yeah, uh, thicker yarn. So when I block them, I'm going to block. Well, I'll show, I'll show you that in a bit. I'm going to block them. But yeah, there you go. Always just one stitch more between the increase of two and the same stitch in each round. Okay. And this is all written out in the written instructions up to like round 10. But again, super easy. Okay. So next up, I'm going to show you the color changes. Whoop, whoop. Okay, so I really, I mean, I think the one colored one are very pretty. Well, they will be much more pretty once I, once I stiffen them. But, and obviously it's easier because you don't have to be changing colors and you just have to deal to, with two tails. But I do love the multicolored ones. I really do think they're lovely. And here you can see like the join. It's a bit irregular. I'm so surprised me with all my rules and... <laughs> Uh, I have found a way now to do it a bit more regular. This one here as well. These are a sat. I usually make these in a sat. So I think they are very pretty, the multicolored ones. Let's see the back side here. Oh, that looks more like, hmm, yeah. Uh, I also made these here, which I absolutely love. Uh, I think these are super pretty. I can't wait to finish these. And here I think I had the like, well, yeah, it's sort of, you see, I'm always moving it one up. I mean, a join is a join. You're always going to see the join. But um, it was rather neat. This one is neat as well. But I only had very little of this uh, this um, neon one. So it kind of went all out of. But I mean, I'm just going to put these in the back. You know, nobody's going to see those. I can't believe I'm showing you. But anyways, uh, <laughs> it is a lot of fun to change color in these and do different colors. So I'm going to show you. I mean, it's easy enough and you can find the way that you like the most, how to change colors, but um, it's always just nice if somebody shows you before. So here I have started, this is my join here. So it's always moving one one sort of uh, stitch to the right, no, to the left, sorry. And I am working over my tails as I do it, as I go along. So I'm just gonna show you a couple of rounds of these so that you can do the same. And these are actually gonna be a sat, like, you know, so I'm trying to use like the same. I'm using these two colors and just all kinds of blues. I just have my my stash of, of blue cotton here. Whoop up. And uh, I'm just using all kinds of different blues. Can't go wrong with, with all the same uh, sort of family of colors. Blues and, and, um, and turquoise and mint green. Mm -mm -mm. Those are my favorites. So... I'm going to make a few more here and just going to show you what I do at the beginning and end of the row to get a relatively neat uh, color change here and also how I work all my tails so I don't have to, we don't, I'm not going to be darning in all these tails, that's just insane. So uh, I finish here the last stitch in each color just, and that's why it's always moving one forward by going into the last stitch of the last color here and just do a normal single crochet there and then I cut my yarn oops okay and next up was coming this green here <laughs> and then I'm just going to start the next stitch straight with that one because um it's just easier to weave in the other end if I finish this this one with this one and again I mean I think it's okay that you can see the the join there but you know 
any way you want to do it is fine. Obviously, you can find some more more fancy way of doing it if you want. This is the way I do it. Uh, you know I'm not afraid with afraid of uh, my my um, things looking handmade because I think that is a good thing. Okay, let's go. So I finished this one here and I'm just going to let this tail uh, lie here and I'm going to work over that at the end of the round. And when I start here now, I'm going to leave a bit of tail and I'm going to work over this end at the beginning of the round. So I just insert my hook into the next one. I, um, I completely finished this single crochet and I'm going to, I'm going to pull up my new yarn. Doesn't want to come. Yeah. There we go. And just do one single crochet in the new color. Like so. And do tighten it up. And then I'm going to lay this uh, end here, the tail, on top of the stitches that I'm working into. And I'm going to work both over the tail and the rope. Okay? Just like five stitches. One. Two. Three. Four and five and then we're just gonna let that go inside like so and then we continue the round and then I work over the other tail at the end of the round okay now I just continue normally I'm gonna show you how I finish the round here at the end of it how I work over the other tail okay I'm not done I'm here at the end of this round I have like five or six stitches left. So what I'm going to do is just pop my hook out quickly and I'm going to get the the tail from last row. And you see how this stitch here is kind of stretched. So I'm, I want to like pull that in. Like so. And then I'm just going to lie, lay this tail here on top of the stitches that I'm going to be working into and work over the tail at the same time. Five or six, five or six stitches is quite enough. Uh, there is that's that's fine again we will be stiffening these so nothing is going to unravel but we obviously just can't leave the the tails there hanging so I'm working over both you see both the, the rope and the tail I mean we can't just leave them hanging there we have to darn them in and I don't want to be darning them in whole whole of them so uh, I just work over them like this and then here you see there's just one stitch left here in the in the next color I'm going to work into that you could if you don't want it to go like sidelines then you could leave that one and then start with the new color but I don't know I kind of like it going sideways like that so you work into the last one finish the the complete single crochet there cut the yarn leave a bit of a tail and then you go for the next color, okay? And then you just, oop. again, it's the same as before. Now I'm just going to take this tail here and I'm going to leave it here on the right side so it's not in my way. And you, st you put your needle into the next stitch and you're just going to pull your new color up here, like so, and you're holding it from the back and then finish the single crochet okay like so and now we're going to work over the the tail here at the beginning as well ah and one thing i'm happy that i'm happy that this happened so here you can see it's it's bulging a bit the the white here so when you're changing color sometimes it will want to well you can't really see it very much but sometimes you have to they, they will be like it will be notable here that you have more of the of the rope showing so just when you change the color just tuck lightly at your at your your rope so that this doesn't happen and sort of move the stitches to the right okay so you don't have you just have the color chains and no visible other difference in the in the what shall we say look um hmm, gauge i'm not sure you know what i mean so do take care of that on the join when you introduce your new color and you can actually on the inside this always happens you see and I don't really mind it on the inside okay I think it's kind of cute and nobody's looking on the inside I mean so that's one two three four five single crochets here working over my tail at the same time as working around the rope and now I'm gonna drop the tail and I go on and finish the round and at the end of the round I am going to work over the tail from last round 
okay? So this is really easy, but it is, um, I, I don't know, it's just nice to know beforehand how you're going to do it, right? Because when I started last, like last night, I was changing colors, I was like, hmm, I didn't remember how, how I did it, so... So it's just nice when somebody thinks of it before beforehand, right? And I'm thinking if I can just chat my way through this round, then I don't have to cut and film again. Because I want to show you this, this just one more time so that there's no confusion. This is slow TV. That's what I do. It's not good though that I talk really fast on this low tea. Like if I would if I would talk slower, then I would have more like I would just go really you know some people actually turn because I, I do well, especially with my, my first tutorials, I would go really fast. That's actually because I hate tutorials that go slow. I'm just I'm so impatient, I just want to see the stuff. Um but so I would go really fast and then people would always ask me to go slower and before I realized I should go slower, people would have to slow the video down. You can't do that actually. Uh, and then I sound like I'm drunk. <laughs> and groom, one more stitch. So that was a fun fact. I think we're getting to the other end of this round. <laughs> you can fast forward as well. <laughs> you can put me on slow or you can put me on quick. Fasting for fast forward is also an option. I will not be offended. Oh, just, you know, don't tell me about it. You don't have to. <laughs> no needs. Okay, now we're here at the end of the, the this round. And then I'm going to take again this tail here that I had at the end of last round. I'm going to pull that out a bit. And I'm going to situate it like so. Whoop. So, and I hold it here from the back. So that I'm working over it at the same time as I work these last stitches here of this round and around the rope as always, okay? And always just when you stop a bit like this, it's always got good to tuck at, at your little cord there because once you stop, you sort of lose the rhythm and then sometimes it will be like an abnormality there. Again, that's fine. These are handmade. We are not trying to hide that fact. That is a precious thing. Uh, so, very good. So I think I'm going to do a couple of more rows. I'm just going to fit. I'm using this... Um, yeah, I didn't tell you. This one is a bit bigger. I did five um, increase rounds here on this one instead of the four on the small one. And I'm using this um, Faustino uh, wine bottle to... This will be my, my insert. So I want this one to be a bit bigger and a bit wider than these two. So yeah, a couple of more rows. And then... Oops, if I put it like this, then you see. Oh, this will be such a cute set <gasps> for my bathroom. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, I'm going to do a couple more rows and then we're going to... Ah, okay. <laughs> we will never get to the stiffening pit. Like, never, ever, ever, ever. Uh, one quick thing, because I can't just... I, I don't want to do this on film. I just want to finish my, my little basket and go and stiffen it. Um, so, one more thing. Uh... When before you finish, let's imagine now that this is my last round. Okay, let's we can imagine that. So before we finish, because the, the thing is that once you've done this fiddly bit here, even if there are no insects going at you, uh, you don't want to be like stretching the basket or putting it inside out or anything, because then this will go all to, you know where, uh, it will just be ducked up. So uh, we need to take care of the ends, obviously. So before I would finish off this one here, if I was finishing it off now, let's pretend, I'm going to turn it inside out, my basket. And I already did, because all this bit is fine now, but once I finish this, then I really don't want to, I don't want to stretch that. So now, before I do the, the cutting and the last few stitches, I am going to get rid of all these ends here. And I just need to tuck at them, each of them. Just tuck nicely at each and every one. And then you cut them. Nothing more is needed to be done because we've already worked over them. They are all hidden inside. And they will be stiffened into place. So just tuck. It's always nice to tuck at the join. Like so. And then just cut them quite close. You don't have to do it right up to, but like just very close to it, like so. And 
then we will have no ends inside, obviously, because we don't want the ends inside when we do the stiffening bit. Okay, so this you do before doing the fiddly bit of finishing your basket. Promise me. <laughs> there will be no, no ducking up the fiddly bit, people. It's very important. It's also easy. This is the only bit that is a bit fiddly, so we will take great care. Uh, before I turn off here, I just wanted to show you that you can go really big. Whoopa! So this here is my big old basket that I use for um, for all my cotton stash, actually. Uh, so, you know, you just continue. You can go as long as you want. Just continue always with one more, more stitch between the increases of two stitches in the same same um, da -da 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 stitch. And one more thing that you must be prepared for now is that you see how the color is here on the outside. It does get a bit matte because I only did the stiffening bit on the outside of this one and it is brighter here on the inside. You see that? Well, you can't really see it on the camera. Well, you just have to take my word for it. So this is the inside and it is a bit brighter than the outside. This one here I did with the jumbo cord. I suspect and hope that I remembered to show you that one in the intro, but that's like um, nine millimeter, yeah. So this one is thicker. And I love this one. It's perfect for the for my stash because so I made it just just to fit actually because I love Katona cotton. So I just made it to fit exactly. So they're just sticking their head just a tiny bit out. You see? So you can make it any height and any width you like. And you can make this obviously for your path as well. That would be really good for like a path bed. Okay, okay, so I'm gonna finish my my multicolored one, and then we're gonna go to stiffing. I promise. You see all the stiffing materials. So there, uh, we will go and stiffen these bad boys. <laughs> Next up. Oh, okay. Okay. So this is a bit of an extra here. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm making some more projects. I'm gonna make this big. Um, floor pillow so I wanted to make something bigger and just wanted to come and do a quick um, pointer something that I do so like I said before when I was showing you how you make it bigger then you always uh, do the increase at the same spot you just have one more stitch in between the increases right well the thing is that when you go really big if you always do them at the same spot you can do that and I did that with my other big baskets because it was sort of just inside the basket anyway. It was the bottom, so it didn't really matter. So it doesn't really show very much. This is going to be on the top of my my um, floor cushion. So what I did do so that it don't you don't because if not you get these little sort of um, corners if you always do the the increase at the same spot. So what I'm doing here now is that I'm just alternating. Okay, because now it's getting quite, quite big and if you'd always do it the same place, then it sort of gets to be like a hexagon uh, form on it. So in every other round, so I would start the round with the increase here. But then in the next round, I will move my increase and just put it in between these two here. You see here I did an increase, here, here I did an increase. And this is also because now I'm up to like 20 stitches in between. I can't possibly be counting to 20 every time. I'm trying to watch TV and do stuff and chat and you know, what have you. <laughs> it's like no fun be making this and being counting to 20 all the bloody time, yeah? So now what I do is that this last time I did the increase here and here. And now I, in the next round, I will just do it here and here, you see? So just move it approximately half half of the stitches here into the middle. And that's the good part as well. I don't have to count. So now I'm just going to go here and I'm going to spot where my next increase in the last round was. And I'm going to situate it then in the middle between these two. And then I move on. Here was one. And do, 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 do. here is another. Yeah. So I'll put mine here. Sort of. Just in a, you know, it doesn't. And that's again the thing. It's not an exact science, you guys. It's, uh, it's you know... If you and at one point I had sort of like felt like it was too getting too much increase I, I must have given it too much rope or something so then I just did one round with no increase I mean this is a this is a happy organic sort of um, let's say a hippie project you don't you can do pure math if you want to and your name is Sui Tavait <laughs> but you can also just wing it uh, Tina style you know. So just wanted to tell you that. Ah, and also here, when I'm doing the color changing here, instead of before I told you, like I, I would always continue until the last stitch in the, in the last color here, which is one here, this one. Now I'm always doing it 
starting the new color in this last stitch. And I kind of like it, especially here when I was doing all the increases at the same spot and they really like it really kept really straight now it's kind of going to the side so i'm just going with it but you know do um sort of there are many ways to do things is what i'm saying i'm just showing you how i'm doing them ah and another thing like when it got a bit wobbly here before so i had to do the one one round with no increase um it wasn't looking so great so before going to bed last night i just wet it put it on my blocking uh what do you call it the blocking thing and uh you know patted it all down and let it dry on the oven on the no on the radiator and now it's perfect ha huh? so yeah that's what i wanted to check in with you guys and show you also isn't it pretty ah! <laughs> okay finally we're here we're up to the stiffening <laughs> we made it uh, so I have these two here that I made. Uh, I want them to be a slightly different size, so I'm putting this one up here. This one was, was 19 rounds, and this here was only 18. And I'm putting the 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 bottom part up in here so that it's a bit shorter because I don't like them to be the exact same size. Um, so I'm going to use this uh, Stiffy from Mod Podge. It's a fabric stiffener. Um, you can also, I think, use this one or even just um, some uh, adhesive lacquer, like wood glue also, watered down. There are lots of, of, of possibilities. I always just use this one because I know it. And um, But you need a bit, uh, quite a bit of this because you need to apply it uh, generously. And so before starting, obviously, you need to... I'm shaking it, shake it, and you will need some sort of some sort of a brush like this. You want it to be rather large, or I also have this here. It's like a um, swamper mm, sponge. Yes, so I'm not gonna. Sh I'm just gonna see which one I like better, and my little bowl to put it in. And like I said, we want to. No, this one was. <laughs> so open it up. It was a new one. So you want to apply it generously that way we don't have to do it so many times with the other two like the ones that i made back in like 2018 uh i think i did it like i did two rounds with those and that was quite fine and they've been nice and stiff ever since and i've moved them between countries and everything so two should be enough but you can apply more if you want and just the more you apply and more rounds of it that you apply the stiffer it will get Okay, so before you start, you want to, ah, it's still happening, I, I thought I took it all, you want to really trim down those, the, the fiddly bits here, so there's nothing standing out here from the rope that we cut, okay, and also, now is the moment where we make this smooth, you know, because this was, this was, uh, is not straight, obviously, so you can use the line on the, on the soda can, to make it be straight, like so. I think it doesn't look straight on the camera, but it is straight. Just so when you push down this bit here a bit, and you know, it's uh, it's very. Um, at this point, you can you can obviously tuck and 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 uh, mold it a bit, and then after you apply the stiffy, then you cannot. Oh my God! This keeps sticking out. So they're making me insane. Ridiculous. Finish this. The name of the game. Okay, I will control myself now. This will be have to be enough. Okay, so uh, I also put some plastic here on the um, uh, on my table because this is a bit messy. I'm gonna start with this one and see. I think actually I was using this one, and you just really want to uh, put as much as you can, and then you just apply it. I haven't put any plastic under uh, the can. We will see tomorrow if that was. Uh, a bad idea. So just really dapple it as much as you can, especially here on the top. I'll do that later and just apply it generously to all the surface. Oop. A bit too generous maybe. And what will happen is that the colors will change a bit. They will become a bit darker. So be prepared for that. And 
just go over all of it and <laughs> this is really messy i'm so professional that's why you watch me right uh but you really want to get as much of it as you can okay i'm gonna try and be over the ball uh on it because the more you get on it then the stiffer it will get so just pat it like this the whole way through and once you finish with all the the main bit of it then i'm going to do the bottom and an extra layer on the top because you want that top bit to be really firm because that's the one that gets most like wear and tear when you start using a little basket okay so this is not complicated at all but I have now glue on my hand, so I'm just gonna keep going <laughs> and finish this one before I put pause on my taping. Yeah, it's good to have the sponge thing actually. It's working quite nicely. Okay, Oop. and you can see the difference in color here. Now I have done the whole circle. And just really try to get as much fabric stiffener in there as you can. And now I'm here at the joint, so I'm going to just fix it a little bit so that it's quite straight. Because once we have applied the stiffener, then this will not be an option. So we want that to be nice and straight. Yep, yep. Okay it to the whole circle and before I go to the bottom bit I'm gonna do an extra round here on the top and it's never gonna be completely straight I suppose it's okay it's hand done handmade handmade happiness And this is white now while you put it on, but then it just turns um, what you call no color uh, see-through. But like I said, the color does of the yarn and the fabric does get slightly, slightly uh, darker after stiffening. This is straight. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm gonna pop it over like this and do the bottom bit. Boop, boop, boop. Oh, I finished my. I need more material. Boop. And just put as much as you can, really. And then I'm going to pop this on the radiator. I don't think you guys. I don't know what you do in the. Uh, foreign countries. We all have here radiators with hot water in it. That's how we uh, do the heating of the houses. So that is really good for stiffening and blocking actually. So everything dries quite quickly. Okay, this is covered. All done. And I think I'll put it, I'll pop it on the radiator now. And then tomorrow I will add another um, round of it. Okay, I'm gonna do the rest of my bottles and then I'm gonna show you how I do the place, the coasters. Okay, onto the coasters. So uh, I just have this um, blocking mat, uh, blocking block here. It's like foam underneath and some plastic over because otherwise it will destroy your blocking mat. And with the coasters, I'm just gonna block the back side of them because I kind of want them to be soft and and nice on the upside so they can like catch the when the when the the, the droplets from the drinks right uh, so i'm just going to put them on the back side and i'm going to pin them down just a little bit because i feel that they are not exactly maybe mm, round so but it's a bit difficult to see from the back side actually hmm yeah As you can see, this is work in progress, but just want to try and get them 
to be nice and like here put this out so that you don't see the and I'm not so worried about the like I should trim these a bit I did trim them but I'm not so worried about these it will just be on the back side of of some coasters this is just a bit of an extra project here I've never done coasters before I just really needed one <laughs> So I thought this would be cute. So mainly I just want to, well, I'm not going to be using my out there a lot. Yeah, this is a bit messy. So be prepared for that. Uh, I'm not going to use my good ones. I'm going to use the small ones because these will get messy and I'll kind of just have to throw them away. So just pin them out just a bit. So especially at the, at the end so that you get that to be more circular like okay i'm gonna continue doing this without the camera in between me and the work and then <laughs> we will apply the stiffener <laughs> okay so i've put some pins in there so basically just what i did i did uh, because the increase is always at the same bit so i kind of put a pin in between all the increases to pull that out so it's more circular i mean it's now going to be a completely perfect circle but and then also i put some pins here at the end just to make it a bit smoother there okay and at any rate if you're not this crazy about finishing uh you, you would want to pin them just a bit down just so they don't, don't fall off while drying and then it's just the same thing just um apply the stiffener to your brush and generously uh, apply the fabric stiffener to it and like I said I'm just going to do it on the back side of the coasters so that the the front side will be soft and nice and also then it won't mess with my color on the front side so just apply it generously like this and then I want to take care to do the edges as well And you kind of you want to do that generously as well but then i'm gonna sweep that up a bit because when it dries it just becomes like this clear glue okay so all the edges and around the, the pins obviously hmm lots of pins here <laughs> that's the that's the finishing bit there just trying to get it straight okay and then you just pop it on the radiator or maybe out in the sun if I'm in Cuba then I put it out in the sun oh you have definitely enough heat now in Europe at least sorry to say okay that's done just gonna try and tidy this up just a bit here on the edges Whoop. take up the excess like so and it's all done and now we just have to see how how it turns out when it dries okay so i'm gonna finish this with all the other ones because it's very important to make like a hundred little baskets and a lot of coasters <laughs> and then uh i'll see you tomorrow when i well, and we'll see how it looks when it's dry okay okay so now let this dry and they actually just pop really nicely out of the can this one is actually just quite hard. I don't think I'll need to apply another one to that. It's quite... Oh, isn't it lovely? Oh, it's so much fun too. Ah. Ah, this one is a bit softer. I'll have to do another round of of uh, on of uh, Stiffy on that one. But it looks... They look lovely together, right? Yay! Oh, I love colour coding. And let's check out the... The uh, da, 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 the coasters. I'm really actually excited about the coasters because I really need a coaster for my wooden uh, desk here that I use for the filming. So this was just too handy when I realized I could do coasters with these. Ah, they're so nice, quite nice shape. Not a completely perfect circle, but rather nice. And so I only did the back side of these. They're not, I mean, I can, I'm not going to do that, but I could, uh, like, fold them, but I don't want to do that, so I'm not going to do that. Um, oh, I'm a bit upset that this is like this, but okay, yeah, no, perfect circle is never going to completely happen, but these are really nice. Ha! Huh? Perfect.
perfect. Okay, I'm gonna get the other ones. The ones that I did with the, the glass bottles. So these are just, I like to, so it's nice to use the soda cans because it's uh, very handy, but I really do like to have these like sat in a bit of a different sizes. So this is like an old antique Carlsberg bottle and this is like an old milk bottle that I have. Okay, I'm gonna take this here away. Okay, and let's see how these pop out. Yeah, so it's nice to have a bit different sizes, you see. Whoop. Lovely. Oh, this really is very satisfying. This is one of the best parts, I must say. This one is not so hard. But the thing is, so now the second time that I apply to these, I mean, I guess I'll pop the bottles back in, but you don't really have to. You can just apply to it again and then put them to dry. But these are really nice. Let's see this one. Just have to wiggle it a bit. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Oh, I was very generous with it. Yeah, there we go. Whoopa! <laughs> oh my God, isn't it lovely? This is so nice. Oh, it was really pretty. And actually these here, well, I will have told you this in the beginning of the video. I was using a different foundation uh, yarn for these, which is thinner. So these are a bit like they're more, um, what do you say? Sort of delicate looking like the, the each round is is smaller, thinner, you know? But this is a beautiful set. Okay, I think this is my new favorite set. Eee! Lovely, and then the big one. I used a uh, wine bottle for that one. And I just put the plastic on it because the, it had like a um, ticket on it. So I didn't want the ticket to be stuck on the inside. Yeah, this one just comes flying off. Whoop ha 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 this one is actually quite firm as well. Oh my God, I love these. And so this is now my new satin. <laughs> oh, these are gorgeous. I'm gonna move the camera just a bit so let you see what they look. Isn't it pretty? Oh, these are beautiful satin. I love these. Ah, oh, yes, this is so satisfying. Oh, okay, I have to make more. <laughs> oh. I love making things that are like sturdy with crochet, you know, because nobody kind of expects it. So it's it's fun to make like hard things with crochet. Oh my God, I have quite a collection now, don't I? <laughs> nice, whoop, whoop. <laughs> okay, I can't wait to see your guys' um, little baskets. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Like if you feel that it's a bit wobbly like this one, I'll do another round of the stiffy just the same way and let it dry. This one is fine, so I won't need to do it. So it's just up to you. You can go as many times as you want. And uh, you can apply it on the inside as well if you want to, but I feel that there's no need for that. I didn't do that with these exact, uh, either, like the old ones. And they are still good four years later. Okay, so yes, please. Go for it, make some baskets. This is crazy fun. And then remember to tag me on social media or post in the group. Woo! Oh my God, this was fun. <laughs>